Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. If tangent 75 degrees is equal to 2 plus the square root of 3, what is the exact value of the following fraction? 6 times sine 375 degrees plus 4 times sine 105 degrees all over cosine of 255 degrees minus cosine of 165 degrees. No digital help is of course allowed. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the calculations correctly, the final answer that you will get for this fraction is equal to 5 square root of 3 minus 1. Uh, okay, so now let us try to solve the problem here. Uh, here they have given us an information about tangent 75 degrees. Of course, you can calculate this number exactly if you know the addition and the addition formula for tangent or even the addition formula for sine and cosine, which will be a different story. Here, the emphasis is not finding tangent of 75 degrees. This number is granted for you based on this piece of information you are supposed to find the exact value of this fraction. So the logic somehow becomes clear, yes? Because the angles that you see here, are, none of them is 75 degrees, so it already gives you the motivation or the hint what to do. Might be it's a good thing to relate all these angles to sine, cosine, tangent of 75 degrees so that we have something to use. Okay, for example, for the first one, let us do like this. So sine of 375 degrees, it is not hard to see that this is bigger than 360 degrees and we know the period of sine is 360 degrees. It might motivate you to write 360 degrees plus 15 degrees, yes? Because 360 degrees plus, 360 degrees plus 15 degrees is this number. So the signs are the same, but we know that 360 degrees is one full round so it if you start from 15 degrees and go one full round you will come back to the 15 degrees again and because the points are the same so it means that sine of this is sine of 15 degrees okay but of course sine of 15 degrees is not good enough because it is connecting this sine of this angle to sine of 15 degrees but the information i have is something about 75 degrees but that's also a minor problem here yes because 15 degrees and 75 degrees are complementary, meaning that if I add them up, it is 19 degrees. And we know this famous rule that the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So instead of writing sine of 15 degrees, I would write cosine of 75 degrees. So again, I repeat the motivation behind that because I want to connect all these things, uh, all these uh, angles to 75 degrees so that I can use this piece of information. Okay, what about sine of 105 degrees? Okay, sine of 105 degrees is also equal to sine because my angle is 75. It is not hard to see that I can write it as 180 degrees minus 75 degrees. And if I use the uh, supplementary angle, uh, 105 degrees and 75 degrees are supplementary, meaning that if I add them up, it is 180 degrees. So the sine of one, of, the signs are the same. So the sine of 105 degrees is exactly equal to the sine of 75 degrees. Okay, to motivate this, so for example, if this is the unit circle, where is 105 degrees? So I start from here, up to here is 90 degrees. I have to go 15 degrees more. So let us assume that this is extra 15 degrees. So I end up here when I go 105 de uh, degrees. But if I ask you where is 75 degrees, 75 degrees is 15 degrees less than 90 degrees. Okay, so this means that you end up exactly at the opposite point, yes? And then you see that they are at the same height. If the picture is precise enough, you realize that they are at the same height. So the y coordinates of these points are the same. So it means that the sine of 105 degrees and the sine of 75 degrees are actually the same. So that's good. I was able to connect these two to 75 degrees. So let us go back, let us go to the denominator. What about cosine of 255 degrees? So cosine 
of 255 degrees, again, I have 75 degrees in the back of my head, so I want to connect it to 75 degrees, then it is not hard to see at all to that this is cosine of 180 degrees plus 75 degrees. If I add 180 degrees to 75 degrees, it becomes 255 degrees, and it is good for us because it is connected to 75 degrees. But now what happens here, if I want to find 255 degrees, uh, so let me clear this. If I want to find that, so I start from here, up to here 90, up to here 180, so up to here is 270, so I have to stop 15 degrees before that. So I will end up somewhere here, for example, this angle is 15 degrees, okay? Now I want to read the coordinates of this point. The x coordinate of this point is cosine of 55 degrees, but I want to relate it to 75 degrees. It is easy to see that if I continue this line, because this is 15 degrees, that also becomes 15 degrees. So this means that this is 75 degrees, okay? So the coordinates of these two points are opposite to one another because this is the... Uh, the reflection of this point with respect to the origin. So if the coordinates are x and y, the coordinates of this are minus x and minus y. So it shows that the cosine of 255 degrees, which corresponds to this point, is opposite to the cosine of 75. So by this analysis, you can immediately realize that this is negative of cosine of 75 degrees. That's also very good. Okay, so, now the last one is 165 degrees, and that is also simple. So cosine of 165 degrees, what can I write for this one? I can write as cosine of 180 degrees minus 15 degrees, uh, minus 15 degrees, because this number is exactly that one. But this is supplement to 15 degrees. 165 plus 15 is 180 degrees, so they are supplement. And the cosine of supplementary angles are opposite. Yes, so it becomes minus cosine of 15 degrees. But I want to connect it to 75 degrees. We know cosine of 15 is sine of 75. So it, minus is minus, and cosine of 15 is sine of 75 because of complementary angle. You can also convince, if you don't know about this minus sign, you can draw a similar picture and convince yourself that the cosine of supplementary angles are opposite. Okay, now the question mark that we want to answer, every one of those are connected to 75 degrees, so I will write the question mark is equal to, here, I have a factor of 6, and then I have sine of 375 degrees that I realize is cosine of 75 degrees. And then I have plus 4 times sine of 105. But sine of 105 is sine of 75. Okay, and then divided by cosine of 255 degrees is minus cosine of 75 degrees. And then I have minus cosine of 165, but cosine of 165 is minus sine 75. There is also a minus sign here, so it becomes plus sine 75 degrees. At least it is a progress, because now instead of having somehow random angles there, I have connected all these angles to 75 degrees, and that is good, because I have this valuable piece of information. But the problem is that tangent is given. I don't need tangents, I need sine and cosine. One way, of course, which is possible, is to use tangent and use trigonometric identities to calculate sine and cosine out of tangent, which is a very standard problem in trigonometry. But it takes time. There is a faster way because of the special form of this. Okay, so if I divide the numerator and denominator by cosine of 75 degrees, what happens immediately you see that tangent 75 degrees will appear. Why? 
So I'm, I'm actually rescaling this fraction by 1 over cosine 50, 75 degrees. So if I divide the numerator by cosine 75 degrees, there are two terms divide to, to divide in the numerator. So this one divided by cosine 75 degrees is just simply 6. And then I have plus a factor 4. But sine 75 divided by cosine 75 is just tangent 75. And that is excellent because according to the problem, I know what tangent of 75 degrees is. But I divided the numerator by this factor. I, am, I have to divide the denominator by the same factor. If I divide this by that, I get minus 1. And if I divide this by that, I get tangent 75. Very good. So now, the last piece of information is just doing some numerical calculations. So I take this off and replace it by that number given in the problem. So this becomes 6 plus 4 times 2 plus the square root of 3 divided by minus 1 plus 2, 2 plus the square root of 3. Yes. Okay, so that's the exact value. But of course, this is not the answer given in the problem. It shows that we have to simplify things a bit. So let me do the calculations here. So let us do some part in our head. 4 times 2, 8, plus 6 is 14. And then 4 times square root of 3. And then denominator, I have a positive 2 minus 1 is 1. And then plus the square root of 3. Okay, so that's correct. But if you see the answer in the problem, we do not have any denominators, so it motivates us to rationalize the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator means writing a fraction equal to this fraction, but without having any third signs in the denominator. And I hope that you know the standard trick is what uh, I think for simplicity of calculation might be too helpful to factor a 2 out. Okay, So that becomes 7 plus 2 square root of 3, and then I will write it as uh, square root of 3, plus 1, it doesn't matter in which order I write it, then I rescale the fraction by square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 minus 1. I'm not changing anything because this number is just 1, and any number multiplied by 1 is the same number, so I'm not doing something illegal. Okay, so then the denominator becomes very simple because that is the conjugate rule. The first one squared is 3 minus the second one squared is 1. Here I have to multiply, so I keep 2 here, and I start multiplying this by that term by term. So 7 square root of 3 minus 7. This multiplied by that square root of 3 square root of 3 is 3 times 2 is 6. And then finally this multiplied by the last term. Yes? Okay, so what happens? 3 minus 1 is 2, and that 2 and that 2 are cancelled. So what is left for me is 7 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3, which is 5 square root of 3. And then I have minus 7 plus 6, which is minus 1. And that is the answer to the question mark, as it is mentioned in the problem. Okay? So I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.